ability to meet a warlord. Yes. Because we're humanitarians and calm and talk about No, there isn't. And also because we we enter these spaces knowing that we have different lives. We also want to enter them with faith. I'm just trying to picture the scene. So you, you go in, say you're meeting a, a warlord, and um, you go in with no arms to tell us, where would you meet? So we usually meet at the rebel outpost, so obviously without giving any locations, but it is usually, you know, a vast plain space that has soldiers who are armed. Um, it's very interesting when I'm asking this question because it's, um, you know, it's just another reality, and I think often it's about are we, are we familiar with that? These big malls and going to the supermarket and having 15 aisles to choose uh, hand soap. I find this reality extremely overwhelming. And quite frankly, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to have that many choices in hand soaps, for instance. But if that's what you're used to, then you don't even necessarily make note of it. So I think I have in an environment of chaos, an environment of conflict. I was raised in an environment of conflict and chaos. Now, evidently, I, I, I managed to extricate myself from these situations, and now here I am putting myself back in those situations, and I think that's a, a good question for my therapist, but it is, um, it is truly just another reality, and, and I think if we want these violent realities to stop, we are only faced with two options. Either we do nothing and stay silent, or we do something about it. So I guess really the risk of doing something about it is smaller than the risk of what would happen if nothing is done. You say you walk in there with no fear. Yes. I, the, the first time I, I, I had fear for about the time that it took me to walk from where I was standing to um, the head of the man. Burst out of my chest, feeling like I was a monster and I wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. And I immediately had these thoughts, thoughts that I think grapple a lot of professionals, especially women, especially women of color, especially black women, even though we are qualified. So there was also the fear of, of the unknown because it was the first time. But it's a fear that immediately I was able to have control over. But I like also to believe that it's my determination in wanting to, to quiet down the overthinking. Big men make of you. Um, you. You walk in there, um, you know, a young woman, and you say, I want to take the children away. What do they, what do they make of you? I guess, um, first of all, they're also women. I just want to make that, make that clear. It is, a, it is an environment that is inevitably dominated by men. But there are really strong women who may not be leading these groups, but who have important roles. And as for me, when I do enter these situations, I focus on you know, the fact that we are here for a designated purpose. So who I am as a person, the fact that I am a woman, or things that I carry with me, but I know also not to push too much on the forefront when I'm dealing with the heads of the group, because I truly just want to be almost behind the name of the organization that we represent, and just focus on the fact that we are here for a mandate. And that mandate includes not using children in times of war. So the the focus just becomes that, and I think it's just about just zooming in and focusing on that that goal that hopefully is common with all the parties present. You do occasionally uh, really upset people, though. I mean, in in Nigeria a couple of years ago, you were declared persona non grata, enemy of the state, effectively. For what? <laughs> Yes, I, 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 uh, it is uh, indeed what happened, and it is public information. I guess I wouldn't be breaking any uh, secrets by saying that indeed I, I, I was declared persona non grata during my last duty station about two years ago in Nigeria. And yes, sometimes 